any of the small accounts in the chat are still holding, this could very well turn into a reversal. So just because Tesla's weak overall doesn't mean that, you know, the index is not drag it up. You know what I just looked at? Meta. What did it do? I didn't even look at it. It touched that bottom and then wicked off of it. Yeah, that 169.80 level. That's the, that's the ugly one right there. Yeah. There's no way someone could have sold off that. What's Apple doing? Apple, okay. Roku. Roku dropped with that. I think Shopify splits this week, I believe. Uh, no, this 28th is when it splits. So in two weeks. I'll signal Tesla again if we get down to 661, most likely. Um, and then we'll play the 660 break as a group, basically. I like 661 if Tesla comes down faster than NQ. Want to know something funny? I'm green on my trade right now. I'm about to get out. Wow, it's still going. Got like 10 seconds left on this candle. Yeah, it's going. Yeah, I love Tesla because look where NQ and ES is at. Order I partially filled. Mm -hmm. Order filled. Broke. Oh, wow. Broke 660. I'm up 20,000. There we go. My alert just went off. 660 has a wall now. Another wake off 660. Could have scalped that too. The NQ is wicking too, that's why. Yeah. Wow. Guys, I'm selling under 660. Stop loss will be like 10 grand for me. I'm up 10 grand, so. I'm breaky. I'm green right now. Yeah, I'm up 10. I am up 3%. Oh, yep. Right here. 20 cents away on the bid. It should break. Thank you. There it goes. Come on. Right, right at, at 60. 60. That's ugly. Yeah, that's annoying. All right. All right. I got you, Tesla. Yeah, I have my stop loss in place, so. Yeah, my stop loss is already. I just feel like taking the risk right now. It's a Monday, so I can afford to hold a little longer. Mason, you think we get 660? NQ just went green to red. 660? Uh... I wouldn't doubt it. It's just, I don't know. The bid's not as weak as I would like it to be. It sounds weird, but. And Q coming down. Tessie going green to red. There we go. This one could be it. Look at NQ's wicking again. Yeah, that's a strong wick, but it hasn't really affected Tessa, so that's why I think this still has um a chance.
Yeah, Tesla's holding down. My stop loss is above 663. Yeah, same here. These contracts are holding up still, too. Granted, it's a Monday, but... Order partially filled. Yeah, I hit my stop loss. Order filled. Nice. <clears throat> I wonder how much I was up in during that. It's just a tricky area for NQ right now, which makes this trade annoying. Yo, what is going on guys? Frankie here from Stock Hours. Um, you guys just saw one of my red trades that I happened to take this week on Monday, June 13th. Um, this is actually one of my better red trades that I've recently had. Um, I ha I was really proud and happy with the risk management that I took on this trade and how I handled the trade um, despite the market being kind of weird on a Monday. Um, being near a key support in the market sentiment, being NQ near that 11,500 level. Um, you guys may be confused on why I'm saying this is one of my better red trades or one of, like one of my prouder trades, despite me being red on it. Um, I happen to journal it with TradeZilla here. Um, uh, you can see here, this is the trade I ended up taking. It took a $500 loss on the Tesla, which is the video you guys just saw. Um, realistically, I had around a 5% stop on a Monday. That's not too much, um, but with how the market's been and going into this week on a Monday, I knew with FOMC announcements coming at, on Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern and quad witching week, um, I knew not to mess around. I knew I had to be a little bit more stricter on my stops. Um, I, we, could, we definitely could see some choppiness, so that's why I had to stick with a hard stop, and I couldn't be a, a little bit looser with my uh, stop loss on a trade like this, so... Um, profit target on this trade was around 26. I knew, um, getting in on, on the fill at 24.44 with my contracts, I knew I wanted to get at least a little bit of at least a dollar fifty on the contracts um, for net positive. Um, realistically, I was looking at least at 26 per contract, looking looking to sell at that price once we did break that 660 level. Didn't happen unfortunately, but it is what it is. You can't do anything about it. You just got to journal about it and move on. Um, some of the key notes that I did journal down with Tradezilla um, when doing this, uh, I'll read you it uh, quote by quote. Um, so I said, I am happy how I handled the first entry at 661 into 660. You saw that earlier in the trade, you could see that Tesla had a straight up falling knife um, into that level. And last week, I ended up taking a similar trade on that and got burned really badly on Tesla. Um, it was a falling knife. Yeah, I FOMO'd. I ended up trying to get a little bit of it. And next like, thing you know is I happened to get caught on a, like a $5 bounce. So it wasn't pretty. It wasn't the best feeling ever. So after that, um, journaling that last week, definitely learned a bit from it. And not to chase Tesla on falling candles like that. They're at least $8 to $10 for, for me and my experience so far. Um, so I wrote that, um, and I so put down, and I waited patiently with, uh, zero FOMO when it came down to Norris and Mason's level at 664 after having the $10 red candle and continuously dropping after that. Learned that lesson once and not to, and not take any entries with falling knives with candles like leading into key levels. Um, I was originally up around 3% when I played it when realistically I was waiting for the break to happen and snack at least a 10% scalp on the trade. Amazing risk management on the first and only trade. Stuck hard to my uh, minus 5% stop loss. Um, yes, I could have held to that 665 level. That was the original level um, when it broke down, especially with the volume being low. Um, when it consolidated between the 665 and the 660 level. Um, but that would have been around a negative 10% stop loss. If um, And if that did happen to come back, um, I knew I wouldn't... And, because uh, usually minus 10% um, on the contracts are my hard stop. Once I see, not what I see, um, I know with the size I use and the contracts um, with how much they're at, I kind of have an idea in my head how much um, how much down 10% is without having to look down on my P&L or anything like that. Um, so usually minus 10% is a hard stop for me. Um, 
where was I on here? And I knew um, if I hit that minus 10%, which I definitely would have if it hit, if it came back to 665, um, even if it decided to come back down, um, I knew if I were to just play the break again, like if I were to sell at 65 for a minus 10% stop loss and then play the 660 break again, I knew I would not have been able to catch a 10% move on that. Um, it's a Monday. It's a lot harder to kind of catch those kinds of uh, percents on a Monday, uh, despite how important the level was on Tesla this morning. So... Um, but I said, I knew I would not be able to catch 10% on the break, especially on a Monday where contracts are harder to get high percents on. So that's a good thing. Keeping my stops tight, despite a few things missed, um, reading price action, like volume. So, um, like I said, volume was one of the things I did miss reading on this trade. Um, could have done a better job on it, but like I said, with quad witching this week, um, FOMC was on Wednesday. So yesterday, um, was Wednesday. Um, today's June 16th, uh, as of making this video. Um, I knew not to mess around and I knew to keep things tight. So next note I did make for this trade was, um, I, this is me talking to myself. Usually when I journaling is, um, I put great job enforcing my rules of cutting off tra trading past 11 AM. That's usually my cut up time. Um, I stuck to my basic foundation of rule sets I have, such as waiting for my number on level two market sentiment, making sense, not going against me and not forcing against it. Um, no falling knives and no trading past 11 a.m. It's important to stick to my basic foundation of rules because it's what grew my account originally last year once everything clicked. The more I still follow these rules and keep them up, I will see my account, my account grow with cutting out uh, dumb trading where I could lose money by not following it. Yes, you can make money past 11 a.m. This is something I want to um, make clear. You can make money past 11 a.m. Um, and going in early or if you're wanting to scale in early into a trade But in my trading history the way I've traded the numbers and probability of my winning trades goes way down with breaking these foundation of rules um, Maybe sometime in the future I can start adjusting that scaling into trades and all that good stuff um, But at the meantime with how the market is and my comfortability with how I like to trade um, That's that's not gonna work for me. So I'm gonna stick to that so um, the last thing I had as a note is um last thing I have to say is that I did follow my trade ideas planned out and adjusted them um, to what I liked and didn't like, despite them happening very poorly in no, not the setup uh, the way I wanted it to be, which is totally okay. Um, which if I do have a trade idea, I like, but don't take it because of how it is set up. Day trading and scalping goes a lot with adjusting to what the market is giving us in a matter of minutes and even seconds before getting into a trade. Didn't force any quote unquote dumb trades after my loss in Tesla and to look at make it all back which is something important that a lot of traders should do and that i want to reiterate on is that even though you may start your day red um on a trade so like i did this is my first trade of the day i um ended up picking a, taking a 500 hundred dollar loss on tesla that shouldn't have to uh, affect you um at all with your trading um, with your next trade your next uh, few trades for the day your, the next day um trading especially the um, day trading and scalping so like every day we're trading we're looking for setups um, that are good that are a plus that we can take advantage of um you want your mind to be black and white you don't want any cloudy or foggy judgment because you took a red trade earlier or because you ended the day red the other day it's important to go in in every trade and treat it completely different from the last one from the last 10 trades you took from even if you were on a green streak um that gives you the market can humble you really quickly um and i've learned that the, hum, the market can humble you pretty quickly um if you think you're if you're hot stuff in the market and you think you can outsmart the market so that's something i just want to stress out to anybody who is new watching this so um, and the last thing I said is it's FOMC week and quad witching so no need to trade past the hours I have set because normally it's I, I for, so I put down um, it's normally trash after 11 a.m. or so um, on FOMC weeks usually even after 11 a.m. in general even if it's not an FOMC week there's not really any earning important earnings or important announcements through the week after 11 a.m. or even that lunch period at 12 you kind of see volume start to die down and that's the last thing I want in my trades, right? The less volume that there is, the less likely the, um, the break you're looking to play will happen. Um, yes, there are some instances where it, it can work, but in my history, um, I've not, I learned to not like trading past 11, let alone past 12, just on the basis of um, there's less probability, there's more fake outs. It's usually we call it algo hours, so there's pretty much just algos moving the markets at that point no really human interaction no much not that many retail traders um in the market so i kind of tend to stay past 11 a.m and just cut it there um 
and just keep it safe. Tradezilla um, helped me notice that that at least in the first two hours of market open, so at least nine thirty, I guess hour and a half, nine thirty to uh, eleven, um, usually which are usually my hottest hours for trading. Um, that's where I was making all my profit. Yes, I make my losses in there as well, but that, that's where I make all my profit from nine thirty to eleven. And I noticed with Tradezilla telling me that past eleven and up to the end of the day till four p.m. Eastern uh, on market close. Um, I would be break even it's like my P&L would be break even or slightly green to the point where it's not even worth it me trading past that time and staying around all day on the computer so and I can just go around and enjoy my day or do some work whatever the case may be so um, but yeah that's my trade recap for you guys hope you guys could enjoy it this is a red trade so hope you guys could learn a uh, thing or two about watching the live trading and me going over it um so hope to bring more videos of these kinds to you guys so other than that i hope you guys enjoy your day don't forget to hit the like button subscribe turn that bell notification on and we will see you guys on the next one peace